hundred long time. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Jack Jack. Welcome back to my show. Now, today we're actually on scene here in Seoul, Korea, where the gaming community is pretty big. It's actually kind of fun. And today, I actually want to expose it to you guys and let you guys see what it's all about. Now, before I actually start, I want to give a big shout out to Ashtastic. You can actually see her website or her YouTube channel, my bad, right here. She's a big time gamer. She does not only playthroughs, but also gaming. I guess you could say gaming experiences. So make sure you guys go and check her out and make sure y'all subscribe. And with that being said, let the show begin. Uh, some pretty old style systems like TurboGrafx-16 and all these other systems that weren't released here in, uh, in America. They're only released, yeah, they're only released in Asia. So TurboGrafx-16 is actually released in... Uh, that's a number bad example. All right, look, look at all the... Look, right here, this is awesome. They're actually still selling. The PS2, this is very re very retro, but not retroactive, I should say, but like, is, all these amazing games, very old. Like, look at that. Oh, no, that's a 3DS. Like, handhelds that I've never seen before. I do think they actually do have a lot of uh, systems that are strictly sold in Korea, or Korea still keeps them alive. I mean, Dreamcast of all things, that's very solid. Hey, what's going on, guys? We're actually downstairs in one of the video game you could say almost like heaven down here in Seoul, Korea. And we actually have somebody from Seoul Weaver. This is Will. What's going on, guys? How's it going? He's actually been here a lot longer than me, so he's actually seen a big change, and he knows a lot about the gaming world here. So, Will, what do you think has actually changed here over the years? Um, this place, actually the place we're going to go through right now, is pretty much the same, but like everything surrounding it has kind of died. It's definitely been done to a lower scale uh, since the time I came here. I can't, the first time I came here was the first week in Korea in 2001, and it is a completely different monster. Games level up, but they still keep every old system, all these old games, and a lot of nostalgia th walking through here, be it in video games, be it in, uh, you'll see like uh, Gundam characters, and models and things like that. Mm, that's true. So you get you get to have a lot of fun walking through here, even if you're only gonna see like old things like Zelda and nostalgia and things like that. So it's pretty awesome. So you think they actually being here? Because like right over here, I can actually see um, Super Mario Brothers. Right. So you think the you think they actually keep the nostalgia alive here with the older systems? On purpose. Nice. On purpose. Like, like intentionally, they make sure they keep all the old things alive here. And unfortunately, with that comes like the pricing that makes it. So what do you think as far as price for Sega Genesis? So as it was in 81 as it is or 89 as it is right now so you think that they don't really lower the value they keep the value high intentionally or just because they're trying to make a dollar um you know that I don't know I think they they have like I don't even think they're used systems I think they're brand new systems and so they just try to I guess make their money back on their investment I'm not sure but um, we should probably see if we can ask some of these guys that I'm not sure if they'll be able to answer questions that complex mm -hmm. uh, they speak English in here enough to make the sale mm -hmm. I don't know if it's enough to to actually answer every question that we have. Okay. But we can ask them like some of our burning questions. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna try to find some people that will speak because we are in South Korea. English isn't the primary language. So we're gonna try to find some people that will talk and we have some questions we wanna ask them in regards to gaming and the gaming world. So with that being said, let's go. Is anybody okay with recording? No, here. Not here? Yeah. Uh, even just walking through is okay? No. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you.
So a lot of things look like this. This, this wouldn't happen back in O2. What? You wouldn't see anything like this back in O2. Just like no, no. It, it's being like changed to storage. So, he has a question about gaming in Korea. Oh, I no, you English. cannot answer? No English. No English? Uh, 저기, uh, 한국에서는 the gaming culture 진짜 uh, 있어요? 없어요? Gaming culture? Gaming culture. Culture? Culture. Uh, gaming, gaming mania. Mania, mania. Pro gamer 있잖아, pro gamer. Pro gamer? Play pro gamer. There's a lot of pro gamer media. Okay. So, there's a lot of pro gamers yeah. here? Mm. What's the game you try here? Starcraft. Starcraft? Mm -hmm. But like Starcraft. Starcraft's a big thing? Mm -hmm. okay. Pro gamers Starcraft. The programmers play a lot of Starcraft. So that means what? Ghost Recon, Call of Duty, the FPS. Ah, uh, FPS, the first person shooters game they really yeah, like. Okay. What's the game you try here? FPS. Everquest? Oh, well, right now, number one is Ghost Recon. Overwatch. That's a big. That's a bit in the United States. Yeah, it's big. Mm. Especially in uh, the states, Overwatch is a huge thing, especially in the PC world. What about the new, what sort of new games? Grand Theft Auto Five. E game. Ask me if there's any um, bad any kind of games are banned or not allowed to be sold. Ah. Oh, jeez. Um, Yogi, <laughs> Game. Yeah. Are there? I don't know how to say that. Forbidden. Forbidden. Are any games not allowed to be played? Game? No. Yeah. Mm. The game is the Hangul gets all block, block, a cancel. Is that right? Offside. Offside. It don't. It don't sound like they block a lot of games. So there's no games blocked. Mm. That's good because especially in other countries, they are especially in like uh, Germany or China. Mm -hmm. Heavy games, they are heavily regulated, and there's a lot of banning on it. So, so I think there's very little banning, but there's a lot of like censorship. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice like um, the the uh, Chinese version of a game will come out, and it'll be like skimpily clad women and things like mm -hmm. that in that Chinese version of the game. They'll push it over to Korea, and they'll have to redesign the character out outfits and things like that. So that it's so more it's less, modest. Yeah, so it's okay. more conservative. Okay. And, uh, but you know the funny thing is when you, he played the Grand Theft Auto Five. And that's actually a very violent game. Very that's... violent, a lot of craziness that goes on in it. Yeah. But it's funny they'll play that game, but mm -hmm. you can see if you watch Korean TV, they block out knives and they block out super violence. Yeah. Go watch John Wick on Korean cable, mm -hmm. and it's like thirty percent of the movie's gone. Oh wow, it's okay. crazy. You're the number one game. So these are the number, these are the best games that he has here. Salam chowayo. Chowakum. So the like for games like For Honor, it's got like a niche appreciation. As you can see, like with this, you can see it's the Korean version because it does have it in actual Hangul. So what he's saying is a lot of these are the very popular games that are. So how Korea na Battlefield, Call of Duty. Mm. Battle, 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 Battlefield, Battlefield, Titanfall, Titanfall yeah. Call of Duty. These, are, these are very Call recent games. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. These are very recent games. Oh, yeah. Epic PS. Mm. Mm. All right. 
Uh, uh, simulation on. Uh, simulation. Ah. Oh, sim and sim games. games. Okay, sims. Really? プレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだとプレイだと
I still like nerding it up and going and fiddling around with Adreno boards and soldering supply stuff. And my kids got, you know, soldering kits. They do have kits over here and putting those together. But again, yeah. if you are looking to come over here and if you're coming over here with that mentality and you don't know that you might hit here and be uh, sorely disappointed with what you find. Yeah. Um, the, just when you factor in pricing availability, and and if you're not here on a total uh, foreigner visa status, like for me, example, for example, I have access to the APO. It doesn't compare. That I mean, I don't have to get that stuff shipped yeah. over. Yeah. So you, since yeah. we can get it from through the APO, you can get through APO. Yeah. Right? You missed your office. So the the shipping pricing is just. Astronomical. Yeah, astronomical. It's ridiculous. It's like you're, the shipping prices are the same as they are in the States. But if you are over here without any access, no sponsorship with the U.S. government, and you're getting your, and you order that same stuff through Amazon and try to get that uh, international shipping or whatever, it's going, it's going to skyrocket up to where you can just go purchase it over here for the same price. Uh, now, the quality is yeah. where you really need to like focus on what you're going to get and things like that. But, huh. yeah. Okay. Like, one thing I've learned also about this situation is being here. Like recently, I've been building my new computer, and here there's it's kind of a handoff. You can buy the stuff here, however, you are going to pay double or triple the price. But then again, you also have the convenience of being able to take it back if it's messed up. However, you can go online and pay a third of the price, but then you have to deal with the shipping time of getting it and sending it. So being here, it's very how would you say uh, it's a give and take. You have to debate what's better, getting something in a timely manner or saving money. Because here, you're not going to get both. Oh, you know what another kicker was? The GoPro 5, the freaking uh, the PX, mm -hmm. post exchange for people that are yeah. not in the military or affiliated with military. Post exchange has, or Amazon has it for like $375, right? You go to iPark right across the way, almost 600,000 won. Which is equivalent to about five hundred and eighty dollars. No, really good. Really good, yeah. Depending yeah. on depending yeah. on the time of year. Yeah, depending yeah. on exchange rate. Exchange rate. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you just like really, and then you get the accessories, and those things are are at least twice to, to three times as much as PX or Amazon. I know it's not computer, it's not gaming base, but it's still electronics base, and that's that's one of the main kickers of. Here, yeah, we're in another China market, so I think that's all. I do tell you what, though, they do have next building over upstairs. If you have camera gear, Canon has a shop that will clean the sensors and all that stuff for like 15,000 won. Awesome! Which is yes. freaking my tits. <laughs> and that little tip right there <laughs> made all this work. Yeah. <laughs> it took me like three weeks to find it. That's crazy. I didn't but know I that was out there. All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? So uh, we actually ran into across someone who, it's pretty cool, we're in Korea. Not only is he a gamer, but he's also from Cali, which is also my home state. So we're actually gonna ask him some of the questions that we have been asking, only because he has more of an insight, so it'll help out. And yes, I'm using my cheat sheet, so don't judge. All right, Grant, question. All right, do you feel that there's actually like serious pro gamers in Seoul? Or do you feel that it's more of a casual gaming scene? I would say it's more of a casual gaming scene. I mean, there's definitely the more enthusiastic hardcore gamers mm -hmm. around, but I feel like most of the people who are into gaming are more of the younger generation, like middle schoolers, high schoolers, and college students. So you, you feel like, especially in Korea, the um, the gaming world is just now catching up to the Western world? Yeah, it's also because of the whole PC-bound culture. Because most people in, in the States, like, we have our own rigs, like, we play mm -hmm. at home in the comfort of our yeah. you know, private space, you know? But here, it's like, there's also that audience, but it's so limited compared to the people who go out and to the PC bonds because that's more of a social environment where no you said you PC go, bond what is yeah. that so it's uh basically a net cafe kind of place where oh internet cafe and, yeah internet cafe okay where they have uh, rigs like actually good rigs built there and then you go there to game because because most of the gaming uh, audience is younger they can't afford you know like $2,000 rigs, like you can, they can't afford that, so that, that's why they have the net cafes where they actually have those kind of high spec rigs to play around with. Oh, nice! Okay, awesome. Oh, oh. 
Okay, so okay, what do you think as far as in Korea with the gaming world? What do you do you think? It, what do you think sets it apart from the rest of the world as far as gaming goes? Besides having, you know, we have ET Land here, which is gaming central. Uh, what I've seen and experienced is mm -hmm. largely similar. There's like little bitty differences. Okay. It's just that there's such an age gap in like the audience of gaming because in the Western world, it, gaming is accepted. You know, people do it until like the 40s. You know, yeah. As you get older, you just keep gaming because that's part of your life. But in Korea, uh, there's more of a. It's still kind of looked down upon. It's still almost like a taboo. Not a taboo, but it's just that as as people get older, like mm -hmm. they have, <clears throat> they find themselves having less and less time for it. Oh, okay. Because like they have work. And yeah, then, families. And Understood. And like they just have less time for it. So it, as as they have less time to play, like the interest also dies down. That that makes absolute sense. Okay, so does it? No. <laughs> now, when it comes to pricing, as far as Korea, because you've been in the states, how do you feel the games priced here are compared to how they are in the states? Do you feel it's evenly priced or do you feel like there's a heavy tax here or do you feel like it's actually cheaper? Uh, I feel like there's like a slight markup, just a bit, because there's also the conversion rate from US dollars to one. Mm, that's true. Which also tax on a bit more, but there's, I guess that you could call it like import tax, but there's also a little bit tacked on more to that. But overall, it could be worse. I've seen worse in like other countries, like mm, that's true. Japan, we say, but they have their own Sony, so that's all good. That's more true. like the Xbox titles over there are like really marked up. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, now in this in Korea, what type? Do you know if, if there's a specific type of game that's popular, like FPS or MMORPGs? Is there a genre of games that are really popular here? Well. What was the most popular three years ago was MOBA games like League of Legends. Mm -hmm. That was really popular back in the day, or like a couple years ago. And these days, it's uh, Overwatch has been flooding the oh, Korean market. I'm like a huge everyone, Overwatch yeah, fan. Yeah, there's a huge fad. And then I feel like the gaming culture in Korea is based off of those fads. Like there was a time before League of Legends where it was more of the MMORPG, mm -hmm. like Blade and Soul. Like WoW. And WoW. Was WoW ever here? Like it was more of a niche because oh, okay. people were always like into the ion and mm. yeah lineage. lineage lineage. It was more grindy. Oh yeah. okay. Now question: Is there any? Now every place has their own exclusives. Are there any games, gaming consoles, or anything of the genre that are exclusive only to Korea? No, I don't think so. Because the Korean market, it's all. I feel like they borrow heavily from the Western world. And they just convert it to a Korean versions? Yeah. Right. Like the MMORPG, it was like Diablo came in and then based off that they made Lineage and all the other iterations of the you know RPG kind of mm -hmm. games. Now, mind you, if you don't want to answer this, you can't. But do you feel like um, there's any type of restrictions to games in Korea? Like, um, to give you an example, in China or uh, Germany, there's certain things that you're not allowed to show on on the game, or has to be modified. The, the program, gram, uh, pardon me, the programmers have to change it for that country. Does that does that include is that in Korea at all, or are they just fair game? I haven't seen too many of those, but like there's like certain uh, exceptions, such as like there was a game called Homefront a while back mm -hmm. about North Korea attacking the United States, and then because of the whole North and South Korea Roger. dynamic going on, like. They banned that in Korea. So other than like those small exceptions, most everything's get fair game. Have you played Witcher 3? Uh, no, but I have seen it. All right, so Witcher 3 has some scenes that are, let's say, more revealing yeah. than normal. Would that still be allowed here? Or would that something like that be probably restricted or edited? I would feel it would be more edited rather than entirely banned out. Oh, OK. That that makes my right, excellent. All right, now you said not beforehand off camera, but I just want to get because I know these guys are curious. Are you more of a PC or a console gamer, and why? I would say I'm more of a PC gamer as opposed to consoles, because I've been like building uh, desktops since I was in high school. Nice. Yeah. The games that I've played, I've always been PC Windows based. So. They've always been focused on PC. Yeah. Okay, that's very nice. Now my last question to you, and you've been amazing to help, and I do want to thank you. Yeah. Have you seen a change in the gaming scene or the gaming world here since, let's say, in the last 
10 years per se has there been a real change or is it still is it still trying to grow or is it pretty much stagnant i would say right now it's stagnant because uh i would say the whole gaming scene was around since the 90s mm-hmm. i feel like esports was something like korea kind of jumped in boat first of all first before the western world like the infrastructure of like professional gaming teams like sk telecom and kt like they've been around for a long time and nice. then i feel like that's that infrastructure is like has been here since the very beginning okay all right well you guys heard it here this has been an amazing interview thank you and with that being said you know Korea is definitely a unique spot in general when it comes to the gaming, the culture, and everything in general. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut to that next scene. Peace. Okay, guys. So today we actually went through and seen how gaming is in Korea. Now, I understand that there wasn't that many interviews only because you have to realize that here, it is incredibly difficult for people to talk on camera, especially if you're telling them YouTube because they're very conservative and shy individuals. So, what did you think of today so far? Um, today actually did, it was pretty enlightening. We did get to talk to a few people. Um, if it was enlightening for nothing else, we got to see a little bit of what the gaming area is like here in the electronic market. Uh, but it was uh, definitely challenging to get people to kind of come out of their shell and just tell us what they thought of the gaming and just share information about the gaming industry as a whole. It was, um, it was like pulling teeth. Yeah, I would say so. Um, one thing I've learned is one, like as you've seen through the video, there's a lot of, you'll see stores, a lot of stores sell the same thing. And from what the people that we were able to talk to off camera, now keep in mind, we did it, we were able to talk to quite a bit of people, but they were no camera, no recording, all off books, like they were doing something, you know, shady. But a lot of them said that the reason they're able to survive so long here when you'll have six or seven stores that all sell the same thing is because of time. They've been here for a decade, two decades or more. So it was it's been quite it's been quite eye-opening, honestly. Very little differentiation between the different shops. They almost all sell like pretty much the same product, but they they just make it work some kind of way. It's just yeah, being I'm, just reputation, um, handling their customers the right way, I guess, and past customers the right way, and mm-hmm. things along those lines. Yeah, I'd say, and then also on top of that, what I've seen was now we went to do two different areas. We went to Ite Land, the mall, and we seen those gaming stores and how they're set up. Then we went to another district that is actually right behind us actually, and seen how they were. And they were very much a lot more shy. And if you went there, as you've seen, a lot of those games that you've seen, a lot of them were for show only, that for you to actually get it, they would have to order it. So being here, it, things are it's almost like Vegas. It's not always what you see because like I said you go there you'll see a bunch of stuff but you really can't get it because they have to order it so it's very eye-opening the place has changed a lot over the years I mean this it was a lot more brick and mortar now and I think right now these are kind of hybrid online and in-person stores yeah yeah brick and mortar stores yeah I think a lot of their sales are gonna be online as far as that goes but there's a lot of places where you order something or you tell them you want something there's like we're, we're gonna have to go get it but they're gonna go to a warehouse around here somewhere pick it up and bring it back so it's, it's it's different than what we normally say have with uh in like the u.s or in western countries for example where the you know the sto- the storage place is in the back at gamestop yeah they go in the back and get it but here they gotta go around the corner and get it from the alley we walked down before yeah that's true um and then on top of that the pricing whoever thought korea was cheap hasn't been to korea their pricing here for per se for one item whatever it may be you're gonna pay x back in the states or on for us amazon <laughs> amazon is our golden ticket here you're gonna pay two to three times that amount because they love tax import tax especially on american items are huge right and so i think what we see amazon doing to uh retail stores in the states it's like just killing retail stores mm-hmm. and it's just putting them out of business they have their own equivalent of that here in korea too i think it's called g market where yeah. everybody's ordering and if you you can imagine if you we as foreigners have a little bit of a harder time going on g market and ordering but if you can imagine 
if you could just go to G Market and order something instead of coming down here and contending with the the you know uh, dealing with people, even yeah. just convenient. You can step out That's of your true. house, it's just like uh, Dave was saying. It's just you. It's so easy. You type it in and you order it, and it comes to your house the next day. And uh, I think that's really putting a stranglehold on places like this. So you might not see places like this that long. Yeah, I, I don't think you will either. And on top of that, one thing you'll see here is they like to they like to keep the nostalgia alive. That's one thing I'll notice both in the gaming world and in the PC world, because let's face it, PC gaming isn't necessarily so much as getting bigger, it's taking over the market. If you look at anybody who's actually a pro gamer, majority of them are gonna be on PC. Now here, we're actually in, this is Electronic District. Yeah. And you can buy, you should be able to buy, because they show it, any and everything for a computer. The problem is, they like to sell older GPUs, older CPUs, older motherboards, that in the states are considered not only so much out of date but obsolete they'll sell here for damn near new prices so they like they like to take the older stuff and just keep it new and that price if you want to get something newer you're going to be buying a uh, for example when we look for graphics cards, mm -hmm. we were building our computers the you had to either you had to buy like the Korean version of the graphics yeah. card of the, of the company, which is scaled and it's down, be scaled down and priced up just because it's a foreign company, or find your Korean equivalent. And I'm not sure. There I, really, I, there really isn't as far as that goes. Right. So I, I did, I wasn't able to find it in my research, uh, and I had to do enough research to the point where I was just like, man, I might as well buy it on Amazon. That's how it was because I, I recently built my gaming computer, and I don't like. I'm not the type of person that likes to wait. So what I wanted to do was pay a little extra and get it here. The problem is when I went to Amazon and I bought my motherboard, on Amazon it was $150. Here, it was the US equivalent of about $325. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, <laughs> that hurts. So as you can see, it's like, it's just, the stuff's here, but if you're, the old saying, pay to play, it ain't no joke. So, all right guys. So I want to I want to thank you guys for being in the episode. I want to thank not only my special guest Will from Soul Weaver. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me. But also David from uh, Surviving Adventures. His link will also be in the description down below. As will Soul Weaver. I suggest you check both of them guys out. But with that being said, much love and peace.